Hello, this is PsychicPodcasts.com. I'm Psychic Sahar. Dr. Atwater, welcome back to Psychic Podcasts. Well, it's wonderful to be here. And Happy New Year to you. <laughs> and Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Dr. Atwater, you're considered an authority on death, near death, and the afterlife. In fact, you have died three times, and you've come back to write about it. So today, we'd like to discuss your recent book, We Live Forever, The Real Truth About Death. Now, can we say in a nutshell, your message is that death is not the final stage? Is that right? Well, well, certainly the title speaks, you know, speaks very loudly and very clearly. We live forever. It doesn't matter what type of of study or search or science you get into, you uh, you are challenged by the same type of information and by the same type of evidence mm-hmm. that there's a lot going on here at the moment of death and even at the moment of birth. We do not come in with a blank slate. And there does seem to be uh, this very real existence without other body and other realms, other dimensions, and other planes. Mm-hmm. So the earth plane then seems to be part of a journey that includes many, many other kinds of planes. What I do in the book, We Live Forever, mm-hmm. The Real Truth About Death, is I really confront the whole issue. Um, this spiritualism or religion or spirituality or dreams and visions or the deathbed, near-death experiences, all of this kind of thing. And the real issue is the soul. Right. And so that's what I um, invite everyone to do is to look at the soul and that the soul has cycles and that the soul has journeys and the soul has goals that are quite apart from our own. Well, hopefully not always apart. Hopefully we have the same one. Yes. The more we merge with our soul, the more aware we are of that higher spirituality. But I try to get deep, 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 mm-hmm. uh, deeper than most people do into the soul itself and into this idea of God or deity, this idea of breath and breathing. You know, one of the things I found in um, my research of near-death experiences, both adults and children, and it, you know, in my research base yes. is nearly 4,000 now, so, you know, I, I'm not talking about just a few cases here. Right. Is that invariably, people start describing what it was like on the other side as if mm-hmm. the whole universe was breathing. Right. And, and, and the children are very open about this, and 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 they talk about that that the whole world, all of you, uh, of the universe, of creation, of the various worlds, are all breathing. Right. That that there is the, when we talk about the breath of God, and I did a lot of research one time. I got in with some seminarians and and uh, professor types that were going back to the old language, you know, and the various different languages uh-huh. of, of the Jesus and before, and what do you mean by spirit, and this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Because spirit, of course, means breathing. Mm-hmm. It means air. It, mm-hmm. ha- it has a lot of different connotations besides, you know, what we usually concern with, uh, are concerned with the idea of spirit. And, and, and when you're talking about the, the Holy Spirit, what do we really mean? What are we really saying when we say the Holy Spirit? Right. And what these seminarians uh, had, had discovered mm-hmm. was what we're really see, saying is the breath of God breathing. If you go back to the old terminology right. and interpret it, according to that interpretation, the word Holy Spirit literally means the breath of God breathing. Right. And and that to me is just like wow. And that, um, just over the the holidays, I had this 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 spiritual offering that is now just being put on my website. Yes. And it's called into this into this breath. It's very short. 
Mm-hmm. But it's where I am now in, in my own search, in my own, uh, in my own sense of self and, yes. and my place in the world into this breath. And it's very short, but, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so, my offering. But, you know, I take all of this, which seems like really heavy subjects, and I play it through where you are in your life, yeah. where you're living, and 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 that intimacy of individual moments and special moments and different people. So it's their stories, it's my stories, all interweaving this larger story. And the main impetus for the book is the death of our granddaughter Miriam. Right. And uh, and her story, and her death is why I wrote the book. Right. Really? Right. So this new information is on your website, um, which is... Yeah, my website is www.pmhatwater.com. Just my name, pmhatwater.com. Dr. Atwater, you also talk about different levels um, during or or maybe after death, so to speak. You talk about 12 levels. You talk about vibratory vibratory levels and and levels that are non-vibratory. Non-vibrational, you know, if, rather. If you're going to get into this idea of different levels, there's mm-hmm. been a lot of research done, a lot of visionary work done. There's a lot of esoteric tradition, mystical traditions about this kind of thing. Uh-huh. And if if you really look at all of it, not just some of it, but all of all it, of it. Mm-hmm. you're not talking about four heavens or seven heavens or seven hells, or four hells. Right. What you're really talking about are 12, at least 12, might be more. Is, is George that... Meek in his book, uh, After Death, What, the he- what yeah. Then, was able to isolate 11. Right. And uh, So are the 12 based on your experience? No. No. I never, I, I very seldom do anything just based on my experience. I'm right. one of these people that, okay, how is it for other people? Right. How is it for groups of other people? Yeah. How is it for people in Egypt? Okay. How is it people for people in Wyoming? So you give a cross kind of culture or a cross, yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, I, I mean, I want to, you know, you, you, your own truth is your own truth. Yeah. That's what determines your own life. But it's so easy to kid ourselves. Yeah. Or it's so easy to assume something that may not really have a lot of substance behind it. Right. So I go for comparing and cross comparing and and interviewing and, and having sessions with people all over. And when I say all over, I mean that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I try to get global, mm-hmm. as global as I can. And then I do the scientific work, and then I go back and I recheck everything yet again. I'm one of these thorough types. Of <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't, I don't take anything for granted. No, no. I mean, your, your yeah, reputation, of course, is precedes you. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, I, I know when to stop and listen and say, okay, you know, we've all had those moments of survival where right. you have a voice speak and you just know you better listen to you better listen right now and yeah. get the comparing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know. I'm just intrigued, um when we talk about the twelve levels for example, um, could people experience more? I don't see any reason why not. I, it, it, so there could be more. Who's to say? Who's to say? Have you experienced any of them, or maybe can you tell us about some of them, or what? Well, sure. Um, what I want to be able to say, yeah, please, it, 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 it's what we see not only in mystical work mm-hmm. or spiritual work mm-hmm. or near death work. It doesn't matter. I don't think what type of exposure. Mm-hmm. As long as we are opening ourselves to other realms besides this one, other realities besides this one, mm-hmm. and when you do that, invariably you come to notice a layering effect that is like a layer cake that there, and, and separated by vibration, by, by frequency of vibration. Mm-hmm. There are definitive planes or matrices or grid patterning, and they do layer. Right. So that you have 
those layers closest to the Earth plane. Right. Um, many times we call that the astral. Right. Uh, which tends to be that, that very first place that, that people go through or pass through mm -hmm. that is very similar to this plane. Mm -hmm. um, and other levels, again, very similar to this plane. Mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's like you, you need to go up to, like, maybe the fourth level mm -hmm. before you start getting into, like, a summer land. Mm -hmm. And you start getting into areas that are more uh, more like paradise mm -hmm. or beyond paradise. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people then who, through their various experiences or deathbed visions or near-death experiences, mm -hmm. say that the other side is like this side. Mm -hmm. Well, what they're saying is that part of the other side right. is like this side. This is the frequency that they experience. That's this frequency that they were, were called to. Mm -hmm. Whether mm -hmm. that be positive or negative, heaven or hell, mm -hmm. that's where they went. But I want to make it very clear mm -hmm. that none is an end point. Mm -hmm. None of it is an end point. Right. I don't know the end point. We can be very flippant and say that rejoining God or going back to God is the end point. I don't think that's an end point either. Right. So it's infinite, really, and it depends on the evolution of, of the soul path. Right. Right. It just goes on and on and on, and there's more and more and more. I don't think anybody... Knows, really. Does, knows, or does any kind of service to their fellow humans when they come out with these very absolutist uh, statements saying this is the way it is. The level we experience or the frequency that we experience or we get called into or we tune into upon death or after death or in a near death experience, what does that depend on? Um, is it our well, personal know, frequency? I mean, you know, th that's kind of a slippery slope. Okay. Uh, a lot of people say, well, it well, it depends on your attitudes and feelings before Believe. you died yeah. or, or yeah. before that occurred. Yeah. It, it it depends on what was going on in your life before that occurred, and you know, Swedenborg and a lot of our great famous um, masters in the past have certainly spoken of this. But, you know, when you really get into the research, and especially if you do broad-based research, mm -hmm. uh, you find exceptions to that. Mm -hmm. And I found enough exceptions to that mm -hmm. that I tend to kind of back away. Right. And I say, well, yes, indeed, it does seem to be dependent on your attitudes, your unfinished business, what's going on in your life, but it's not just that. Right. So that there's, there's more always to it. that element of mystery. Mm. There's always that element of something else that you can't quite define in words because there are no words to define it. Yes. But there's always that extra force, that extra something, that extra something else mm. that... Um, it's constantly evolving, I think. Right. So it, we're always and, experiencing something. And that it something. does interfere or intervene mm -hmm. or... It does have some play. Mm -hmm. So we can't just say, well, it was your this attitude. This is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Right. Can we talk about prayer? You talk about prayer as well, or the importance of prayer in, in, in the book. What do you mean by prayer? Prayer, prayer. Praying? Oh, praying. Mm. Is that related to breath? You're saying you you discussed a bit on how if when we breathe together we can also experience the breath of God or breathing with the source. Does this relate to the pulsating universe or the frequency or the breathing as you mentioned earlier that the whole world is breathing? Well, yes, I, I think it does. Um, I, I would encourage your people to to read my book Future Future Memory. Yes. Um, and that goes course, into that in yeah. depth. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it, it, you know, when I died, I'm going to be personal here. When I yeah, died, yeah. In my, my third near death experience, I, I went to what I truly believe was the center point of creation. And, and one of the things I noticed there was that I got into simultaneity. Uh huh. And. Uh, of course, no such thing as time and space. But one of the things I noticed was 
There was no up or down. Uh-huh. There was no left or right. <laughs> there was no forward or backward. Yes. The only movement anything made was expansion and contraction in rhythm as if the whole universe, all of creation, the only movement anything made was breathing. Was breathing. And my sense is that if we can get deeper into the meaning of that, Mm -hmm. then we're going to get a lot closer to the kinds of answers or at least the kind of sense of truth that we all want to find. Hmm. That's really intriguing. That's lovely. So that could be through meditation or through sure. just simply attuning ourselves to this breathing kind of pulse or, or rhythm, really, that's going on in the universe. Or being very active out in nature. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and out in the fresh air and out with all the critters and the bugs and the soil. And yes. You know, it's amazing what, what you can get just by attuning to nature. Fascinating, Dr. Atwater. I really look forward to receiving my copy. <laughs> I'm, I'm yes, reading I your, to your, your copy of the book. You, yeah. you don't have it yet. No, I hasn't hasn't received really. So. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. About that. Well, it could be with the holidays and so on. But I really look forward to it. And um, what does the new year hold for you on a personal level? Well, I I don't really know. Except I know this. Uh-huh. It's going to be a lot busier. It's going to be a lot more intense. Uh-huh. It's going to be a lot more passionate. It's going to be a year where. I can simply be who I am. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> and, and I'm looking forward to that. I think that's really neat. Yes, yes. We forget that we're human beings as opposed to human doings. <laughs> so <laughs> it's nice to be in the now, so, so to speak. Well, well, thank- one, of the, one of the thrills that I have this year is, is uh, bit by bit, some people are finally catching on to the fact that using labels... Mm-hmm to call our children is really not uh, not good. It's not helpful. It's not healthy. Right. This idea of saying the indigo children or the crystal children right. is really not even truthful. Yes. Uh, because so few of those children have an indigo or I mean, it's rare. Yeah. So yeah. one of the thrills I have is people who are open to talking about the pluses and minuses with the new children because they really are new. Yes. And I had an I, I have an opportunity in July to go to Nelson, British Columbia, Canada mm-hmm. to be part of the Global Inspiration Conference. Mm-hmm. And that will be mentioned on my website very soon. Mm-hmm. And I would encourage anybody and everybody. I mean, it's really global. Right. People are going to be there from Russia and Singapore and everywhere. Oh, lovely. Wonderful. We'll mention that as well. Oh, yeah. That's just so exciting. So I'm, I'm excited about exciting things. <laughs> but I'm also excited mm-hmm. about simple things. And, and just, I, I've just got to say to your audience, my husband and I will celebrate 26 years of marriage in April. And I've got to say that every year it, it's just more and more and more and more of a privilege to just to, just to be in the same room that man is in yeah. and just to touch his skin. He is love personified. You know, a lot of these near-death experiencers say, well, they talk about their angels, and I tell all of them, hey, I married mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> He's just so wonderful. And my husband is an African-American. Uh. You know, he's... He's just dark skin and this black curly hair and uh-huh, I'm this uh-huh. speckled white person. <laughs> well, I'm not really white. I'm just speckled. And we make such a colorful couple. <laughs> you know, it's been so much fun. Oh, that's I wonderful. I just have enjoyed it so much. Well, I hope that we can speak again soon in the future. And I look forward to receiving the book. And um, we'll be in touch. Okay, that would be really great. And... Happy New Year to all of your audience and to you as well, and enjoy your day. Thank you very much, Dr. Atwater. Bye-bye. Bye.